so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. The Bible says, as newborn babes or babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Here you can see the word of God as often is compared to something that you can eat, like milk, in this case drinking it. It's also compared in the Bible to honey, sweeter also than honey. It's compared to meat. It's compared to bread, the Bible calls it in Deuteronomy 8.3. So God compares his word to many different things that you can actually eat because we are to view the word of God as something that we must eat for our subsistence. We must view the word of God as our spiritual food. Now what does this mean for you today? Well, that means the same way that you view food, at least you ought to view the Word of God in a similar way. Let's go to Proverbs 13. Proverbs in chapter number 13. Let's think about how you eat. Let's think about your, your view of food. First of all, most people eat every day. And I say most people eat multiple times in the day. Jesus talks of our daily bread in Matthew 6, 11. And the Bible describes in the, even the Old Testament when they, for example, were fed, God would feed them in the morning and the evening. He would feed them bread and flesh uh, every day. Bread in the morning and, or men in the morning and quail in the evening. When God fed Elijah, he fed them in 1 Kings 17 with uh, uh, things to eat. The ravens brought him in the morning and the evening. So you can see that they're eating every day. People often eat all the time, every single day. Just like you eat every day, then you should view the Word of God the same way. You should read the Bible every day. You see, many people, are, they make sure they get their breakfast, they make sure they get their lunch, and they make sure they get their dinner. I'm glad for you that you're being healthy and nutritious. But I think you need to nutrify your spirit. You need to make sure you get breakfast, lunch, and dinner of this. You need to make sure you're reading the Bible every single day. You, would you forget to eat? I mean, if some people ate the Bible, so to speak, like they eat physical, uh, ate physical food like they ate the Bible, uh, they would starve to death. They would come, for example, on a Sunday morning and they'd eat a big meal, as it were. And then they go back on Sunday evening, and then Monday and Tuesday and nothing, and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, they're about to die. They're a bag of bones, and they come in on Sunday morning and they grab the meal, the plate, and they eat it. This is crazy. You should be reading the Bible every single day, just like you eat every single day. Number two, you should also read the Bible attentively, just like you eat your meal. Now, who has ever fallen asleep eating a meal? Maybe if they're really tired, I guess, but when you eat, you sit up straight. When you eat, you're sitting up, uh, or sitting up straight, so to speak, in a proper posture to make sure that you can take that food into your mouth. So the same is true. When they heard the words of God in the book of Nehemiah, they were all attentive to the words, the Bible says. The same thing when Jesus was preaching. They were listening to him with great focus. Same with Job, what he says. So we should therefore, just like we eat with great focus, great attention, I'm going to make sure that this spoonful of this soup goes into my mouth. I'm going to make sure that this verse goes into my heart. As I'm reading, I'm focusing, I'm paying attention. I'm not falling asleep. I'm not lacking in attention. I'm not laying down. But rather, I am focused. I am attent reading the Word. Number three, Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 25. You should read the Bible abundantly, just like you eat enough food to satisfy your stomach. Does anyone take a plate of rice and just put one grain on it and think that that's enough? But there are many Christians today who will just open the Bible like this. They'll point to one verse. They'll read it. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. All right, thank you, God. And that's enough for me today. That's one grain of rice. We want a whole plate of rice. I want multiple chapters. I want, as it were, sometimes uh, a book or two of the Bible. So you should eat abundantly, as the Bible says. Drink, eat, O friends, yea, drink, drink abundantly, O beloved. So God commands us, therefore, in some way to eat the word of God, to Isaiah, Isaiah eat sufficiently. Proverbs chapter number 13, chapter 25, the Bible says, at the end of this chapter, the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. What this primarily means is that someone who is a righteous person is going to be blessed by God to where he has enough to be able to eat what he needs to survive and to be actually satisfied. As it says elsewhere, the soul of the righteous is what we've made fat. Uh, but the person who's wicked, the Bible says God will cast his substance away. God's going to make him a poor man and he's not going to be able to eat what he needs. He's going to actually starve. Well, I can see then a parallel here. When you're a righteous person, you're eating a lot spiritually. When you're a wicked person, you're not eating anything spiritually. You're wasting away spiritually. Eat the word of God. Deuteronomy 8, 3 says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know, that man doth not live by bread only, 
but by every word that proceeded the mouth of the Lord doth man live. When God led the children of Israel through the wilderness, he taught them this lesson that I'm explaining to you right now. How did he do it? Well, what he did was he decided to cut them off from the opportunity to grow crops by making them to be nomadic and wandering around the wilderness. So therefore, they would not be able to provide for themselves in this way. So what they had to do was rely upon God to provide a special miracle every single day, where manna would come down from heaven, it says in Exodus chapter 16, that man did eat angels' food, which is called, in the same chapter, bread from heaven. And Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father, Jesus says. So God had given them that manna. It is the, a, a symbol of the word of God. Now there were two things very interestingly about this manna, this thing that we have to eat, this as coriander seed. First of all, the Bible describes that it would only come and stay until the afternoon. When the sun was hot, it would melt away. So if you didn't get the manna early in the morning, you didn't get manna, you didn't eat that morning. The same thing with reading the Bible. I think it's a great idea for you, just like when people wake up to eat, you should wake up and read the Bible. Perhaps even the first thing you do in the morning is to read the Word of God. Now listen, you don't have to read the Bible for two hours to read the Bible. You could read for 10 minutes. You could read for 20 minutes, and you could get a small meal of the Word of God in your soul. Get that manna early in the morning before the sun of carefulness, before the sun of worries of this world burns it away into where you don't have the opportunity. Oh, I'm so busy. I've got so many things going on. Make sure you wake up early and get that manna. The second thing about the manna, the Bible says of the manna that they had to go and collect it every day, and that they weren't allowed to store it until the next day. Otherwise, it would say it would breed worms and stink. So they had to get the manna every single day, a daily retrieval of the Word of God, just like you. Don't be like people who rely on the old manna. I remember I saved a man in Uganda very early on, and he was an old man, and he said, you know, I've learned from you that I'm supposed to read the Bible every single day. He said, but I, I read the Bible once or twice, and I, for years I said, that's enough for me. I don't need the Word of God anymore. I already got enough of it. This is what a lot of Christians think. They think that, for example, I've already eaten a lot of manna yesterday. I don't need any more today. But you know that you're supposed to just like eat, eat, or eat, or eat. Would you say that? I had a big buffet three days ago. I don't need to eat today. No, you would want to eat again today, physically. So the same thing spiritually. Treat the Word of God like your spiritual food. Number two.